Kristen, we, I, I'm getting very frustrated. We keep hearing about these meetings, the pictures, but is anything actually happening, any movement? Because movement is what matters to voters. Well, Steph, first of all, thank you so much for having me, and thank you for that warm welcome back. I really appreciate it. It's so great to be back on your show. Look, I think what you said at the top is accurate. There's a lot of talk. It's not clear how much progress there actually has been. What we do know is that there is a sense of urgency. There are more discussions than we have seen before. It's significant that Senator Manchin is talking to Senator Sanders. That is not something that we should overlook. As you pointed out, Senator Sinema will be here at the White House today, as will a group of moderates and progressives. So what are the key sticking points that they're focused on right now? Well, I am told that they're focused on potentially scaling back that key climate provision that was a part of the Build Back Better plan. Now, are progressives going to get on board with that? No one knows, Steph. That's a big question. They're even looking at scaling back the child tax credit. They're talking about other provisions like potentially a carbon tax. But again, will they be able to find middle ground? Will there be an agreement by that October 31st self-imposed deadline by Democrats, Steph? That's the big question. I've been talking to officials here behind the scenes at the White House. One said, look, they are very, very cautiously optimistic, but it's just not clear that they're all going to reach an agreement. So will they be able to get something done on these two big proposals or will they start to look to peel these provisions off and try to pass things piecemeal? That's the big question here, I think, Steph. OK, John, Biden is meeting with moderates and progressives at the White House, but in separate rooms. How ridiculous is that? They cannot even meet in the same room. Can you imagine any scenario in your professional life when you and colleagues who are supposed to be on the same team can't even sit in the same room? No, I mean, it, it's not that bad. They're not, you know, they're not ready to kill each other. But, you know, it, it's they've, they've I think your setup was really good. There is a sense of urgency here. I think they're coming back. You know, Congress is getting back into town. The House not even in till tonight when they're voting. The Senate is in. It came in yesterday. I mean, Democrats have to make progress this week. They really have to get. They have to get a top line agreement by October 31st. By that, you know, which you really think they really have to do it by the beginning of next week. They need to have a vote on the bipartisan infrastructure bill by October 31st, or delay it for a second time which would be a huge blow to moderates. They'd be very upset by this. Joe Manchin, of course, is, and Cinema were, of course, right in the middle of putting them back, that package. And then, you know, they've got to get some kind of traction on the human infrastructure bill, the Build Back Better plan. So, I mean, they, they have to show some kind of progress this week. There's really, the president is doing what he has to do. He's, he needs to get involved because this is Biden's agenda at stake. This is the president's agenda. So this is critical for him to be personally involved. He's the only one who can make this deal happen. Speaker Pelosi, Senate Majority Leader Schumer, they can't do it. It has to be the president. So when we say they're going to the White House, Kristen, is the president himself rolling up his sleeves and meeting with both teams, uh, teams, I say, um, because he is pinning all of his hopes, basically, on getting this thing done this week. He is going to be in those critical meetings today, Steph. There's no doubt about that. And based on my conversations here, he's also going to be holding urgent phone calls throughout the week, really trying to get some movement on this. And I think you're going to see that personal involvement that you all were just talking about on display when he hits the road. He's going to be in Scranton, Pennsylvania tomorrow talking about the Build Back Better plan. He's going to hold a town hall event on Thursday. There is so much at stake here. Biden's agenda but even before that, Steph, we are two weeks away from races all across the country, including key gubernatorial races. You have Terry McAuliffe, who's, of course, the Democratic candidate in Virginia, saying, get into a room and get this done. Because if you don't get an agreement, it could hurt chances for election like Terry McAuliffe's for other Democrats all across the country. And of course, Steph, it could also have an impact on the midterm. So the stakes could not be higher for this White House as they look to a day of urgent meetings here behind the scenes. John, but what are we to believe? Last week, Bernie Sanders writing an op-ed in a West Virginia paper, clearly going after Joe Manchin. But then, I showed it before, we saw that arm-in-arm -arm photo of the two of them together. 
I don't get it because the thing about Joe Manchin, whether you love him or hate him, he's been consistent the whole entire time. And what he wants and Sanders wants are never going to be aligned. You know, it's so funny, so because that's exactly what we wrote this morning is that Manchin, if you if you followed him, which we do and you guys have done a great job with, but, you know, he's told everybody where he's at pretty much that he's, you know, he was never going to go for three and a half trillion dollars. He, you know, he's, medi he's concerned about expanding Medicare, which is something Sanders has done. Sanders wants to or Sanders wants to do in terms of uh, vision, dental and hearing programs. I mean, he's never going to want to spend the kind of money progressives are going to want to spend. But he still wants to spend a lot of money. I mean, you're still talking about several trillion dollars. So he, you know, he wants the this uh, infrastructure package that's over a trillion dollars, and he would do a deal at one and a half to probably to two trillion dollars, depending how it's structured. You can get a lot of stuff in there. Yes, he's not going to be, you know, he's not going to give uh, 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 the child tax credit for for ten years at the level that they want. He's going to want some mean testing, means testing on that. But he's, you know. He's there for a deal if they can if they can work hard.